So the, the entry point for soft robotics can be uh, rather inexpensive because, again, it's you know, casting uh, with off-the-shelf rubbers. At the same time, other aspects of robotics are also approachable. You know, the advent of the Arduino and all the things that made to it um, is also making robotics become very, very egalitarian. So I think that uh, soft robotics, just like many other fields of robotics, are becoming accessible to, to everyone. And it increases the amount to which you see inspiration in this world because you know, uh, people have remarkable minds, not just the ones who have access to resources to use them. So um, lowering the barrier of entry means that more people on the planet are contributing to our, tech, our technology society, and it's fantastic to see. Um, I was at an academic robotics conference uh, a few weeks back, and a very substantial portion of all the presentations had to do with soft robotics. And you know why is this? It's, it's the fact that there are these insurmountable challenges in the field of robots um, that, that, that people can't solve unless you start bringing in these compliance structures. And so now that people are starting to realize the power of using this, this platform technology, you know, they're starting to implement it in all manner of systems. And I think that, that as that understanding of the capabilities of soft robotics grows, the implementation will grow and you'll start seeing more and more of it in robotic systems to the point where, you know, in a little while from now, I, I kind of feel like people won't think twice about seeing soft robotics. It will just be robotics where that soft part was the coolest part. I'm most excited about human robotic interaction. So you take a look at collaborative robotics and a lot of great people have taken the approach of taking systems that are made out of metal, that move fast, that have a lot of aspects of them that are fundamentally dangerous and through good software and good sensing, you know, building systems that could lower the level of threat from, from the device. So there are a lot of interesting areas of soft robotics that are being explored. So as I said before, soft robotics, think of it, is not just the actuators but the sensors and both are being um, researched in, in interesting application spaces. So if you think about the soft actuators side of it and going back to human robot interactions, there are people who are building uh, mechanical kind of heart assist devices. So imagine an LVAD uh, that you know, cups under the heart and can compress the heart and pump blood. That's, that's remarkable. Uh, you have the ability to circulate blood through the body for someone whose heart isn't working in a way where the mechanical parts never actually make blood contact, which is actually a very substantial improvement to the quality of someone's health. So that's a human robotic mechanical interaction. Uh, another example of that is you probably have seen a whole bunch of uh, robot soft robotic hands where actuators are laid on the back of a hand and allow you to either A, um, do rehab exercises. Uh, I myself once, um, once hurt, hurt my hand and um, I had to do rehab exercises. They're very boring. You kind of never actually do them unless you're at your physical therapist's office and then they yell at you for not doing them. So imagine a glove that you could bring home and it was simple to use. It kind of wasn't an inconvenience. So you had a higher rate of patient compliance by using this system which means uh, a lower chance of kind of surgical revision of, of whatever was done uh, to, to mend you. Uh, because you're complying with your treatment, you have the capacity to take this soft mechanical structure and incorporate it with something that's more engaging than physical therapy, like you know a video game that tracks your progress and um, kind of rewards you for good behavior. So you know, that's the sort of, you know, doing that with a soft structure is a lot more plausible than a hard structure. And on the far end of it, by using fundamental soft actuator technology, you have healthier people. So that's very interesting. There's also the soft robotic sensor side, which um, you, know, you could see in, in wearables, right? Right now, wearables predominantly focus on sports applications. But, and and those, are, those are fun and great applications. But you know, skinning people's bodies with sensors could have a lot of meaning for society, for example. The world's, um, you know, world's population is aging. You, you take a look at all across Europe and all across North America and China and Japan, and you name it. Um, there's this inverted population where everyone is towards uh, the, side of, uh, the elder side of the spectrum where they need care. 
And part of that care is understanding what's going on in a person's body. Um, and we, we don't have enough people to do all that work. So you know, using soft compliant sensing structures to um, monitor someone's health, provide you real-time warnings when something you know, horrible has happened, I think that's a wonderful application. It actually also brings us back to uh, mechanical soft robotic wearables where something like the, um, you know, the rehab glove I just described could also be an exoskeleton that allows you to keep living your life you know, long after you may not have the full physical capability of doing so. So when I think of you know, outside of, of the gripping solutions that, that we deliver here of great places that, that soft robotics need to be, I think of wearable robotics.